Exploring other planets on the Enterprise is easy by comparison. Actually, on Star Trek, before you explore a planet, you have to create one. It's a planet of shapeshifters, uh, so you'll see very little architecture. It's mostly rocks and vegetation. Zimmerman uses 20th century materials and scenic techniques to create the illusion of a rocky planet. We uh, go out to a rock face in nature and take a rubber cast of a real rock, and then from that we shoot fiberglass and resin into the mold and uh, create skins. And from the skins, the carpenters fabricate rocks like this. Zimmerman is continually challenged to create an exotic alien setting with down-to-earth materials. These trees are century plants. They're a tree that grows in the desert. They're about as alien-looking as any plants that are readily available on Earth. Zimmerman and his team create landscapes of other planets to carry the story forward. But why would NASA scientists simulate alien worlds? We built this to be a planetary surface terrain simulator, basically as a test bed for driving or operating robots that would operate on a planetary surface to just kind of get some sense of how well they'll go up a hill, how well they'll negotiate a boulder. One of the reasons that we have these backdrops uh, in this simulator is that when we're operating a vehicle in here, we're actually doing it from another place. It could be across the country. And so having this backdrop really gives you a much better sense of being on another planet when you're operating from a remote location. We've already begun to explore nearby planets, and there are billions of stars still beyond our reach. The Enterprise has found new worlds, but is anybody really out there? We are being hailed. All stop, Mr. Crusher. Open a channel. The crew of the Enterprise and Deep Space Nine routinely encounter alien life forms. Sometimes they're friendly. I want to tell you how happy I am to be assigned to the Enterprise. Sometimes a little pushy. Sometimes they're an eternal nuisance. A few of them are very unusual but most of them look remarkably similar to humans. They breathe oxygen and speak English extremely well. Our world is reactivated. Our people express their gratitude. Scientists have yet to verify that the universe is populated with sentient beings, but according to one cast member, it's only a matter of time. I believe that we'd be pretty uh, egotistic to think that we're the only uh, cogent creatures in the universe. Armin Shimmerman plays Quark, a Ferengi entrepreneur who runs the bar on Deep Space Nine. When you're looking at the noise from nature... Dr. Jill Tarter basically agrees with Armin Shimmerman. She's the project scientist and manager for Project Phoenix, a privately funded effort to search for evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. It's the continuation of the SETI research that began back in 1960. They listen to the heavens with radio telescopes. The radio spectrum is broad, and it turns out that the best signals to look for or listen for um, are the kinds of things that, as far as we know, nature can never produce. So if you find such a signal, you've either found a new brand of astrophysics that you didn't expect, or you found evidence of another technology. Believing in sentient beings who send radio signals from another planet is a long way from actually encountering one. We talk about looking for a needle in a haystack, but that's easy compared to perhaps finding an extraterrestrial uh, radio signal from a distant civilization. Action! That's too simple. However, if you are an actor on Star Trek, you can help along the evolutionary process, especially if you are the first of your species. I created this species many years ago on Star Trek The Next Generation. You work with your females. They were described as short humanoids with large balls. I, I imagine they were referring to the top of their head. Um, those first characterizations I didn't like after a while. The character I've created in Quark is a little bit more noble, a bit more mercenary, and he has very nice togs, you can see, 
and uh, that was an indication to me that uh, that he was doing quite well. Quark, the Ferengi, is one of a multitude of species that inhabit the Star Trek universe. That diversity may also exist in our universe. I suspect that evolution taking place on another planet over billions of years will produce an end product or a, a series of products which are fantastically different than what we have here on Earth today.